Mance Jolly did not return home a hero. He was part of a defeated army. But in the two years that he lived in Anderson after the war, a legend grew around him. We'll take a look at Mance Jolly the legend this week under the kudzu. To truly understand the legend of Mance Jolly, you first have to examine his times. Hardened in battle, Mance Jolly returned to a world he did not recognize. Most of Jolly's family had been wiped out by the war. Five of the Jolly sons were dead. Four died in battle, while the fifth died in a field hospital. To Mance, not only did he have to deal with the loss of his brothers, he had less labor with which to work the farm. But Mance Jolly had been through war. He could certainly bring his farm back. With the help of his remaining brother, his sisters, and friend Tom Largent, Jolly set out to rebuild. Anderson had escaped much of the damage of the war, but on May 1, 1865, the village was reacquainted. Federal troops searching for Jefferson Davis crossed the Rocky River and entered Anderson near present-day Old Silverbrook Cemetery. Beside the waters of the Silverbrook Creek, many of the town's sons, daughters, and mothers were holding a May Day festival to celebrate the end of the war and the return of their sons and husbands. All celebrations came abruptly to an end as federal horses and men crossed the creek. The soldiers approached Anderson from the southeast and headed for University Hill, site of the printing presses for the Confederate treasury. After ransacking the building, presumably looking for Confederate gold, the troops headed north toward the square. The townspeople were in a panic. Soldiers rounded up all the male citizens and held them in the basement of the courthouse as prisoners. Women and children were left to fend for themselves. Thankfully, there was a supply of wine in the basement of Bayless Creighton's store on the corner of East Benson and South Main. Creighton allowed the soldiers to have the wine. Many of them became so drunk, they decided not to damage the town any further. Mance was almost certainly in town that day, as the celebrations for May Day were a major event for Anderson. To see the treatment of the civilians must have angered him. The war, after all, was over. His actions at the time are not known, but whatever Jolly did on May Day 1865, federal troops were now after him. We know this because of a report that appears in the Anderson Intelligencer the following year. Federal raiders went to the Jolly home in early May 1865 to arrest it. Jolly, however, was not there. The raiders instead ransacked the home and stole items of value, including a gold watch and a small pistol. It was also reported that Mrs. Jolly and her daughters were handled roughly. The article includes an interesting phrase about the relationship between Jolly and the federal troops. Jolly is described as being in an unenviable light with the military. Exactly how Jolly came to be in this light is not stated, but the article also states that it was well known. Thankfully, the Raiders stayed in Anderson just a few days before they heard reports that Jefferson Davis was near Abbeville, but Anderson's Union occupation was just beginning. The Union occupation of Anderson was the catalyst for Jolly. He would use the skills he learned as a scout to lead a one-man war against the federal troops who occupied Anderson. I'm Brian Scott, and we'll look at Mance Jolly's one-man war next week under the Kudzu.